In this video, we're continuing our revision of trigonometric concepts, but we're going to be looking at the unit circle and the trigonometric functions such as sine, cos, and tan. So I've already explained what the unit circle was in the previous video, and that is, it's a circle which has length 1. And that means every, from the centre to all the different points, has length 1. So unit circle, and it has length equal to 1. Now, when you take an angle, so we'll take a point here, take a line, and then obviously there's going to be an angle between here and the base, and this is going, then this can come down, and it can form a right angle. So you can form a triangle if you go along any point in the unit circle. So going along another point, you can go here, and this comes down, then this can come down as well, and you get a right angle. You can go along any single point and you can form different triangles. So this line, this is when cos and sine come in. Now if you have a point here from the origin, so this point here, you're drawing a line, and then this comes down, forms a right angle, and then goes across. This point down here is cos theta, and this point here is sine theta. So the cos is the base and then the sine is a is a hypo, uh, the opposite line here coming down. And then whatever sine theta is, that is the length of this line here and whatever the length here is, that's cos theta. But this is for a unit circle with length 1, however that's where how cos and sine are defined. But this is quite useful in regards to thinking. So if pi is equal to 0, that means we have a straight line down here. Now we know that cos 0 degrees is equal to 1. And thinking about this, that makes sense. Because if we have a straight line coming down, that means we're going to go from the origin to the outside of the circle. And the, from the origin to any outside of the circle has length unit equal to 1. So the base, cos theta, will be equal to 1. Now, what about this length here, so the opposite length. Well, there's no so vertical length, so that's why sine 0 degrees, not theta degrees, 0 degrees is equal to 0. And also, col yeah, cos 0 radians is equal to 1, and sine 0 radians is equal to 0. Then, if we're looking at when theta is equal to pi on 2, or 90 degrees, then this is that angle here. And when you have that angle here, you're going from the origin to the outside of the circle. And we know that because this is a unit circle, this has length 1. Now what's the base length? Well, there's no base, base length or there's no horizontal component. There's only this vertical component. So that's why cos pi on 2 is equal to 0 and sine pi on 2 is equal to 1. And this is quite useful with regards to thinking about um, trigonometric functions. It means you don't have to memorize as much because you can think back to this unit circle. So another very useful implication is working out if it's positive or negative. So when it's in the first quadrant, so this is called the first quadrant, this is called the second, the third, and the fourth. So any angle in the first quadrant with sine and cos, so sine theta will give you a positive result and cos theta will give you a positive result in the first quadrant. But in the second quadrant, this is not the case. So if we have cos 180 degrees, this is equal to negative 1. So not positive 1, negative 1. That's because when you take him from the origin, and then you go to the outside, this is length 1. But if we're thinking about this as a y and x-axis, and we have origin here of 0, 0, we have actually got negative 1 here, because that's negative 1, 0. So that means cos 180 degrees, or cos pi, will equal negative 1. And then sine pi, sine 100 degrees will obviously equal 0, because there's no vertical component. Thinking about this unit circle, we can, well firstly think about start, uh, cos. So we've already said that cos is positive in the first. Then cos is negative. 
And then uh, in the third quadrant, cos for r is still negative. And then in the fourth quadrant, cos is once again positive. And that's because we're looking at the x-axis here. So the first and fourth is positive, the second and third it's negative. Then we can look at sine. Well, sine theta is going to be positive in the first, and sine theta is going to be positive in the second. And that's because any uh, vertical distance is going to be in the positive y values. But then sine theta in the third quadrant is negative. That's because all these values here will be negative y values. And in the fourth quadrant, sine theta will also be negative. So thinking about the unit circle, it's very, um, it's good in regards to you can learn something and then bring it back to this understanding and then it will help you learn it as well as um, strengthen your understanding. So it's a good way of working out if it's positive or negative, as well as the unit circle is useful for saying things such as like the negative one, one for the angles where you're along the axis. So going back to sine, cos, and tan. So if we have an angle here, right angle triangle, then we can work out what is sine theta defined as. Well, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So this, when you have an angle here, this is referred to as the opposite. This length here is referred to, no, if I, yeah, the length here is referred to as the opposite. The length here is referred to the adjacent. And this length here is referred to as the hypotenuse. And then you can remember from Pythagoras that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where c squared is the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is the longest length. So if we're taking an angle here, then sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So whatever this opposite value is, you then divide it by the hypotenuse. Cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So a good way to remember this is that the sine is the opposite, because if you remember before, sine theta was referring to the opposite when we're looking at the unit circle. We saw that sine theta is referring to this value here. So then it makes sense that when we look at this value here, that the, it's going to be talking about the opposite value or the vertical component. But then we have to divide by the hypotenuse. Now, if you remember, with the unit circle, the hypotenuse, if we like imagine a circle going all the way here, is always equal to 1 because the difference between the center to the end is always equal to 1. So as the hypotenuse is equal to 1, the opposite is equal to sine theta. So that's why you can just say that is equal to sine theta for the unit circle. But as this is not always a unit circle, because the hypotenuse can be different values, we have to divide by the hypotenuse. Then cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And finally, tan. So tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. But a very, another useful way of calculating it is it's equal to sine theta over cos theta. And we'll just quickly prove that here. So we know that, we know that. And then we need to prove that tan theta is opposite over adjacent, which is also equal to sine theta over cos theta. So we've got these two formulas here. So we can just sub those values in. So tan theta, so we'll, we'll go on the sine theta on cos theta. That's equal to opposite over hypotenuse divided by adjacent over hypotenuse. That is equal to opposite over hypotenuse times hypotenuse over adjacent. So you flip it, then change the divide to a times. The hypotenuse cancel, and we get opposite over adjacent. So that is equal to tan theta. So when you have the angle you can and opposite and adjacent, you can just calculate it using that. If you have sine and cos, you can use sine theta over cos theta to calculate it. And if you remember this, that is very useful. And also thinking about um, opposite over adjacent, it can help you understand some of the tan values. So if we're looking at, let's say, tan 0, so what about tan 0 degrees? So this is undefined. And the reason for that is it's no, not undefined. So that is equal to 0. So tan 0 is equal to 0. And that's because sine 0 is equal to 0. 
and cos theta, cos zero is equal to one. Therefore, zero and one is equal to zero. But tan pi on two is equal to undefined. And the reason why it's undefined is because cos theta as cos theta is equal to zero. And when cos theta is equal to zero, you're going to get a number divided by zero. And something divided by zero is undefined. So you can think about like tan when sine theta and is zero, then it's going to be zero. When cos theta is zero, it's going to be undefined. And then what happens when sine theta is equal to cos theta? Well, when that happens, tan is going to be equal to one because any number divided by itself will equal one. So tan theta is equal to one. And that is very useful when this occurs, sine theta and cos theta occurs when theta is equal to 45 degrees. And if you go back to the unit circle, you should try and think about that. If you have a 45 degree line, that means the opposite and the adjacent are going to be equal in length.